We're at the airport again. We're headed to Nashville to Summer Nam. So we'll be updating you as we go. If you make anything at all, there's not a better place to send your stuff than Worship Tutorials. What up, Worship Tutorials? It's um, Jimmy Gems here reporting live at Summonam. There's Stu, there's Brian, there's Bradford, and there's HW. Hey! Jim. Jim. What up, Brian? You stole my camera. I stole your Jim. camera. What are you doing? I stole the camera. Welcome to Worship Tutorials. I'll be your host today. I'm Spence <laughs> Pepper. Today I've got a special guest with me. Okay. Uh, his name, why don't you introduce yourself? My name is Brian. Brian, good to meet you. Let us oh, enter the I Tesla. I have this game on my iPhone. Yeah, I have it on my Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, roasted. It is um, nine o'clock in the morning on Thursday. This is HW. Hey there. Bradford. Curtis. Hey. We're gonna go to NAM. Dude, we are about to hit NAM so hard. Me. We'll do an interview with Brian Wall. We're gonna catch him in the wild. Fresh out of the uh, out of the bathroom. This is Brian. Hey, I gotta Wall. say something about the bathrooms here at Nam. There's an episode of Seinfeld where Kramer adopts a mile of the highway. You yeah, yeah, with this? yeah. And he turns a four lane highway into a two lane comfort cruise or whatever he calls. It. He just like paints over the lines. Keep going to that bathroom. I'm telling you. Wow. The width of the it's stalls. Yeah. It's like, I mean, you just saddle up, but it's like, yeah. you know, usually usually you want to leave, this is a tip, this is urinal etiquette. Usually you want to leave like a stall between you and the next person. That's right. Like, I just got right next, right up next to Curtis in this, and it was like, it was like, no, no, I didn't feel awkward at all. Well, it's, it's downright decadent. Just, we don't like to brag about it, but we've got some pretty <laughs> nice urinals. This Hello. is the Stu G. Hello, the Brian. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Stu G plays guitar in a little band you may have heard of called Delirious. Extremely groundbreaking in the praise and worship world. I was telling Stu that I I bought the uh, the Cutting Edge album yes. back in the 90s. And to this day, they sound modern and relevant. Like, it was so groundbreaking, so influential in my life. Such a privilege to, to meet, to be able to meet you. Awesome. Oh man! It's like your playing is just like so influential. Uh, yes. I'm on the now. Oh no, no. But, but tell so tell YouTube Land here a little yeah. bit about what you're what you're involved in these days. Yes, yeah, so I tour with Mike W. Smith. Yeah, no big and, deal. Uh, um, um, yeah, so really loving that. Yeah. You know, keeping uh, my, my live jobs in. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, actually, I feel like um, with having to learn some of the stuff from Michael from the 80s and 90s, oh, you know, really? I feel like a better player now than I ever really? have done. But, um, yeah. Uh, so that's really cool. Are you and like? Then, are you able to throw in like a rock and solo in the middle of Friends? That's right. Or, something yeah. like, or go, go West, young man. Yeah, yeah use my something. fuzz pedal. Yeah. <laughs> that would be sweet. Yeah. But um, yeah, and then apart from that, I've been doing something called the Beatitudes Project. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so love to chat with you all about that. Sure. What you is? Know, can you time. explain it in a nutshell? In a nutshell, it's a 21st century lens on the themes of the Beatitudes. Okay. Using music and story and film. Okay. And where can people check it out? Uh, the Beatitudes Project dot com. <laughs> okay. Cool. And uh, we have a Project we have a film getting released in about two months time. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Look out for that. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Thank Good you. to meet you. Yeah. This is a Don Grosh, um, what do they call these? Electrojets? It's a JM style. -ish. Yeah, it looks like a Stratish kind of informed shape. Yeah. And you're going to put some Lambertones Ristrettos in here. We're putting some Ristrettos in here, and I'm really looking forward to it because I've heard really good things, um, mostly from you. <laughs> I want to yeah. see what all the fuss is about. So Curtis is going to personally install his P90s in your guitar, and yeah. we're going to document it here.
So none of that was recording. Just <laughs> okay, good. Ryan, do you know how good. To I didn't so I, our best take. So I had to reset this oh, up. Yeah. We're headed out of Nam. Yeah. I've never personally played a really great vintage guitar. So we're gonna go to Carter Vintage, which uh -huh. is a shop here in Nashville. There's a tons of tons of vintage stuff. I am going to find a great vintage guitar and I'm gonna play it. The Sues. What have we found? We found all the guitars. We're at Carter Vintage. Yeah. There, there they all are. Have you played anything that uh, blows you away? Here just blows Carter's? your beard back? Um, there's some really old Martins over there, which are really nice. So my search for a great vintage guitar continues. This is the uh, natural step up, like if you've got a Squire vintage modified, uh, maybe. Yeah, I mean, you can just naturally kind of kind of step into a 59 Telecaster. <laughs> if that won't do, there's a 55. 55, oh, for, that one's only 27? 27.5. Zeus has the 59, and I have the 55. Beautiful specimens. They're buddies. Yeah, they're friends. A 1940 J55 Gibson. This is an excellent sounding guitar. This one's a 1960 Strat, refinished, but the finish looks pretty old. This one feels really, really, really good. This is a guitar that I could play. It's only 87.50. Thanks to the refin. What do you think? I could get down with this. Yeah, it feels good. I'll okay. take the lot. We're in a tiny room. He thought we already had one. Stu, what, are you, what are you playing? Well, what are you playing? Like hello. hello. <laughs> what guitar is this? Uh, this is a... <clears throat> I actually don't know what it is. It's a lot of money. It's 15. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's 15 it's grand. It says it's a 58 Les Paul, but I don't think it's an original body. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Does it have some magic? Does it what? Does it have some magic actually in it? actually sounds really good, yeah. Mm. Put it on yeah. that first channel again, let it rip, dude. This yeah, is yeah, yeah. Part. Yeah. Again. So it's really tight in this room, and what's about to happen is going to clip the audio on this camera, without a doubt. Yeah, who cares? Well, let's let's, let's yeah. film it. We all know. So uh, this is like volume two on the guitar. This is volume two on the guitar. <laughs> Digital clipping doesn't sound good on the video. That was one of the most glorious things I've ever heard. <laughs> Stu, can you can you play the place in this world solo for me? I'll try. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Carter Vintage, since we're okay. right outside the building. Played some vintage stuff. Some 50s, yeah. 60s. I honestly was not impressed. Huh. I, we, there was that one Strat. Um, that's there was okay. A, no, that's okay. There was, what year was I that? 1960 excited. Strat. I, I will, exactly. Refinished in Fiesta Red. Fiesta Red. That was that, awesome. That felt incredibly good. And we didn't plug it in. But I will say but this. At that point, I'm not worried about it. I know it'll sound good if it feels good. Right. I'll say this: the the modern guitars that I have feel just as good as any of those vintage guitars. Hmm. I think part of my problem, though, was every single one of them needed a setup and new strings. I have some relic guitars, and I will say, 
the relic guitars that I have, yeah, let me try uh, this for you. they feel different than okay. the, the vintage guitars. Because like, they're not okay. real. It's not a real relic. You're not real, man. But they feel they're different. Yeah, but I HW. think they feel pretty much as good. H what was that? What HW. Feels like? We're talking the relic guitars that I have. Like the MJT in particular. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very good relic. Hey, HW, here's a question. A if you had to walk out of Carter's with an electric, what would you have got With today? one electric? Yeah. Anything you saw that jumped out at you? Shouldn't be that hard. There was a $15,000 Les Paul that we're not really sure what the story was, why right. it was 15th. It had a lot of specs. There was a lot of words on that tag. It looks like something was not original about it. It could have been like a like a 50s conversion to a burst. Right. So I don't, I'm not sure, but it sounded great. It was pretty cool. You did buy the amp that it was playing to. We bought the park. I think Stu might buy it after I'm done with it. I could tell he kind of wanted to buy it. But that was way fun. I enjoyed it very much. So we're at the Nashville airport, and I'm starting to believe that I'm cursed, friends. Because every time we fly somewhere, every time I have flown somewhere in the past memory, the flight has been delayed. This time significantly. There's a thunderstorm out here. They can't get anything going. We're at least an hour delayed on the way home. But here's the kicker. In Raleigh, my wife is leaving for a conference for what she does for work tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. She's flying to Mexico City. So, you know, my six-year-old child will be stranded at home with no parents, so uh, Fuller lives in my neighborhood. So we both just texted Fuller. And Brad was like, Fuller, by the way, I might not make it home tomorrow, so nobody's going to be at my worship. And I texted him like, Fuller, my wife might be dro dropping my child off at your house at 6.30 a.m. on her way to the airport. We're on the plane, finally. There's a tiny bit of and a, an empty a silver lining. If you know how Southwest does their seating, it's just a free-for-all, really. So, um, Brad, Brad and I sat opposite ends, and we left, we left the intimidation chair open to see if anyone would sit in it. Great success.